Hello everybody and welcome to the BlueWorks Live June 2018 release preview session. I'm Margaret Thorpe, BlueWorks Live Offering Manager, and today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the BlueWorks Live release that's coming out this weekend on Saturday, June 23rd. So with this release of BlueWorks Live, we've enhanced reporting, improved account management, and strengthened security and privacy. There are a variety of new and updated exports, there's a new policy Excel export. There's a new user group export. The where use tool is available for user groups now. The results of all where use queries can be exported to Excel. There's a new glossary details sheet on the process Excel and uh, decision Excel exports. Stakeholder rows are clearly broken out in the glossary Excel export. And the new Excel exports have an improved format with an overview sheet as well as a definition sheet. We've also made it a little easier to manage your BlueWorks Live account. Admins will receive advanced notification of account expiration via email now, and admins can resend expired or lost invitations. And there's a new tutorial available in the training space, and we've made a couple of changes to how the training space works. We've also strengthened our security and privacy controls. We have some new ISO certifications, we're GDPR compliant, a one-time passcode is required now when registering a new trial account, and we're deprecating the low security policy in BlueWorks Live. So let's take a look at these enhancements in more detail. And first up, let's talk about the reporting enhancements. So you can now export policies to Microsoft Excel from either the Policies page of the library, which you see here on the upper left of my slide, or directly from the Policy Details page, which you see on the right. And the export looks like this. You can see here from the tabs at the bottom that there's a sheet for the description, the hyperlinks, attachments, and tags, as well as a couple of new sheets that we've started to incorporate into the newer exports. There's an overview sheet, which you see here on the upper right, that provides some high-level info about the export. For example, you see the space that the policy resides in. If it were a subspace, you would see the space hierarchy as well. The name of the policy, the, the unique artifact ID, the URL, who created the artifact and when it was created, as well as the export date and the name of the exporter. On this new definitions sheet, you'll find exactly that, definitions. Basically, a description of each of the columns in the Excel export. A user groups can be exported now as well, from either the user groups page of the library, as you see here on the left, or directly from the user group details page, as you see in the upper right. Now, as you see here in the Excel file on the bottom, the members of the user group are included in this export, so both individual users as well as user groups, um, along with their license type, user group permissions, and URL. Um, any tags that are defined for the user group are also included. We've also made the where use query available for user groups. So admins and space managers can see what spaces a user group has been added to or whether it's being used by another user group. The Where Use tool is available both on the user groups page of the library, which you see here on the left, as well as directly from the user group details page. The results of all Where Use queries can be exported to Excel now. Just look for the export icon in the upper right hand corner of the Where Use report. You can see it here circled in green with that green arrow coming out of it. Now the contents of the export will differ, of course, um, depending on whether you were querying a process, a policy, a decision, a glossary value, or a user group. But here's an example where I've queried the user group business analysts and I've exported the Where Use results. And this exported Excel file shows a summary of how many usages there are on the overview sheet. You can see that this user group is a participant in two spaces, for example. And then it's got a sheet listing all of the spaces that the user group participates in, a sheet listing other user groups um, the user group is listed in, and another sheet showing swim lane groups that it's used in if there are any. So that's an example of one of the where used exports. But as I mentioned, you can export all of your where used results now. So the process and decision exports have been enhanced to include a new sheet that shows all of the glossary values that are being used by the process or decision, along with their visibility setting and description. 
And this was added to facilitate QA of processes being published or moved to production, basically. So a couple of customers, the admins, told us that they won't approve publication of a process that uses non-preferred values, for example. And they needed an easy way to review the glossary values used by a process prior to publication. So with this sheet, the admin will be able to quickly glance over the glossary values being used to make sure that no non-preferred values are being used when they approve a process. The glossary export has also been enhanced. Um, it has a new column for properties that may play multiple roles. For example, participants, business owners, experts. As you see here, this new column titled Usage Type indicates that the first value, Accounting Supervisor Mary, is being used as an expert in one or more processes, whereas the second row, Application System, is being used as a participant. The Customer Suppliers and Inputs Outputs properties also include this new column. This makes it easier for the Glossary Manager to make sure that certain property values are being used consistently according to your organization's standards. Now let's look at some of the things we've done to make it easier to manage your BlueWorks Live account. If you lose track of when your account subscription needs to be renewed, you can always find the expiration date on the Account Information tab of the Admin Console, which you see here on the left, uh, circled in green. Now with this release, you'll also receive proactive email notifications alerting you of your upcoming account expiration about 30 days and then again about seven days prior to expiration. Um, and that notification will be sent to the, the account admins. So you know, in case you receive one of those, you won't be surprised now. Now sometimes users that are invited to BlueWorks Live may lose their invitation emails or maybe they're on vacation or they're not checking their email and the invitation expires. Before this release, you had to archive the user and then restore them in order to re-invite them to the account. But with this release, you'll be able to simply resend the invitation. That way you won't lose the user info that you entered, you know, license type, business unit, maybe you added them to some user groups, things like that. Um, so to do this, just go to the user management tab of the admin console and locate the user. As you see here on the right, it's very easy to find expired user invitations now because they're displayed in red. Just click on the user's name and the user settings dialog will come up. And as you can see here on the right, there's now a button that will allow you to resend the invitation. And once the invitation is resent, the user's status will change from expired to invited on the user management tab. And the links in any previous invitations that may still be out there will no longer work. We've also made some changes to the way that the built-in tutorials work. So now when a user navigates to their personal training space in BlueWorks Live for the first time, they'll see an introductory pop-up that describes the various tutorials and tells them how to find them and use them. And this pop-up can be accessed at any time by clicking on the large gray information icon on the upper right-hand corner of the training space. We've also added a new discovery mapping tutorial to the training space and it shows you how to create a discovery map and how to turn it into a process diagram. It's sort of fun, so be sure and check it out. Now, I also wanted to mention that we've strengthened BlueWorks Live security and privacy. So we're compliant with the European Union's new G General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR. And you can learn more about IBM's approach to GDPR by exploring this first link I've provided here. And to learn more about the details of BlueWorks Live compliance, the second link provides BlueWorks Live data processing and protections details, while the third link will take you to IBM's agreement on processing of personal data for cloud services. Now, in addition to being ISO 27001 certified, BlueWorks Live is also undergoing certification for ISO 27017 and 27018 now, both of which are supplemental to 27001. And we expect to receive certification for both of these in July. Um, so in case anybody's interested, 27017 is a cloud-focused standard. The guidelines include identification of risks and associated controls for the use of cloud services. I mean, it provides a security control framework and implementation guidance for both cloud service customers and cloud service providers. 
whereas the 27018 um, is a data privacy related standard and those guidelines include identification of risks and associated controls to ensure privacy of personal data and it provides a control framework and an implementation guidance primarily for public cloud service processors. So as a result of all this, we're tightening security and in particular, we'll be enforcing stronger password requirements. So starting in December, there will no longer be a low password policy in BlueWorks Live. So if your account is currently using the low password policy, then you'll need to upgrade to at least medium by September or BlueWorks Live will automatically reset your security policy to high. Um, and all your users will need to create new passwords that comply with the high policy at that time. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've also started using one-time passcodes for trial account registrations. So now users registering for trial accounts will have to obtain and enter a one-time passcode in order to register for a trial account. So that's it for security and privacy in this release. And just to summarize everything that we've just walked through, you've seen that we've enhanced BlueWorks Live reporting, improved account management, and strengthened security and privacy. Uh, we saw that there are a variety of new and updated exports. There's a new policy Excel export, a new user group Excel export, the where use tools available for user groups now. The results of all where use queries can be exported to Excel. There's a new glossary detail sheet on the processes and decision Excel exports. Stakeholder roles are clearly broken out in the Glossary Excel export. And the new Excel exports have an improved format with an overview sheet as well as a definition sheet now. You saw, also saw some of the things that we've done in this release to make it a little easier to manage your BlueWorks Live account. So admins will receive advanced notification of account expiration via email now. Admins can send, resend expired or lost invitations. And there is a new tutorial available in the training space, and we've made a couple of changes to how the training space works. As you also saw, we've strengthened our security and privacy controls. We've got some additional ISO certifications coming up. We're GDPR compliant. A one-time passcode is required now when registering a new trial account. And we're deprecating the low security policy in BlueWorks Live. So that's all I've got. And if you give me just a moment to take you out of broadcast mode, I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. So give me a moment here. Thanks so much.